Well, hey guys, welcome to the farm. Actually in my soap lab where I make all my soap and skincare products. Welcome back to the farm, but if you're new, welcome. My name is JC and my husband and I bought this farm to homestead on, also to run our youth program, utilizing our horses and I make handcrafted goat milk soap from our goat milk and other skincare products. So I'm gonna take you along today with that. So this is my soap lab. I've been organizing, so there's still quite a few things I need to get set. This is kind of like my packing and labeling area. Um, this is where I shrink wrap my soaps. I love having being able to shrink wrap my soaps. So, um, and along the back wall, I have um, my printing and everything for shipping and all of my botanicals because I love all natural using all natural ingredients especially the stuff I grow here on the farm and my essential oils and specific natural fragrances. Got oils melting here in my double boiler. My recipes are ready because the first thing that we're going to do today and I'm going to take you all along on several days I'm squeezing between one of my studio lights is shampoo bars. Okay I do cold process shampoo bars. I'm finishing melting down this little bit of oil here. Uh, it's so important guys if you make soap or desire to make soap do not microwave your oils and butters <laughs> and don't take them to a really high heat I, i've watched a lot of videos where they're like oh just pop it in the microwave and i'm like no <laughs> it completely destroys the um, molecular structure of the oils so it'll turn to soap absolutely but you're going to be missing a lot of the benefits um so anyway that's my i i melt it to it gets a certain point on the double boiler and then i take it off and let it just finish melting down i have three shampoo bars i will i'm not giving out my complete recipe it took me a year to formulate but i will tell you some really important ingredients when you're formulating yours and how important it is depending on what um, type of hair. I think this one's uh, normal to curly and, and it really goes on your scalp. That's what you're trying to clean and heal is the scalp. Your hair will be, you reap the benefits of that. I have essential oils specifically for each scalp type. So my types are um, normal to curly mane. Just like I said, I do a play on words there the oily mane and dry mane. So I went through and researched oils and butters and essential oils and other additives that would be beneficial for each type of scalp. Now, when I first started, my hair was really, really dry and my scalp was pretty normal, but my hair was dry. So I started off testing the um, dry mane. Within about six weeks, it felt like it was leaving a little bit residue on my hair, so I switched to normal curly. So it actually healed my scalp, healed my hair, and I was able to go to a normal based shampoo bar that I created. So the other thing you wanna take in consideration is that what kind of super fat do you need per bar? Uh, typically, 5% would be normal. That's what you use in a normal uh, shampoo bar. And if you don't understand super fat, basically that is what oils are left after saponification so everything else is going to turn to soap but that five percent or like in my dry mane i use seven percent super fat in my oily mane i use three percent super fat and i'm going to show you how i put all these together one by one and the other things we're going to do i'm going to show you how to make labels on canva i have all these soaps to finish uh, shrink wrapping and putting labels on. I have my pink hippie body butter that I need to do and we're gonna make some watermelon sugar scrub. Okay, although I'm not leaving my recipe below, I wanna share with you some important ingredients you can add to your recipe to make it a great shampoo bar. And this goes across the board. I add this to all of my um, different types of uh, shampoo bars. So one is rice flour. So I get organic rice flour and I add um, about a teaspoon of this, I think my soap mold is like 42 ounces. So I add a teaspoon of that. That will help strengthen the hair. It has amino acids in it, which really helps nourish the scalp and the hair follicles. So you have less breakage and it really strengthens it. So that is something I add in all three. The other thing I add is organic apple cider vinegar. Now you don't wanna go over 3% of your total oils. So if you figure out you know, all your oils in your recipe using soap calc, which I explained in this video here, you can watch, then you don't wanna go over 3%. You wanna stay within that 
versus your total oil weight in your recipe, depending on what size your soap mold is. Now, the benefits of apple cider vinegar are great because is it really helps um, condition the scalp. It gets rid of itchiness, dryness. It helps to get rid of any buildup on your hair without stripping up, you know, doesn't strip it of its natural oils. Okay, I had to fix y'all. The third thing that I add in the shampoo bars, and they're goat milk shampoo bars, by the way, is nettle tea. So I have taken my unbleached cotton tea bags and put them the nettle tea in and put the hot water in, basically just making a tea. Now I put this in with the goat milk, uh, the frozen goat milk that I do, that method, when I add the lye in. So um, it just goes in, I do about an ounce of this in each in each batch. And this will help stimulate the scalp and help promote um, hair growth. Okay, I'm getting my hair pulled back. The other thing I add is kaolin clay. I add that to every single bar I create. It creates a nice um, slick um, feel. You know, you can shave with all my uh, soap bars and um, it just is great for the hair and each bar has a specific clay I use as well. I don't use an excess amount of clay in each one, basically a tablespoon, I mean, I'm sorry, a teaspoon of kaolin clay, a teaspoon of whether it's gonna be pink clay or green clay. And I'm trying to remember the other one I use for the oily mane, but I'll, as I go through each one, I'll kind of share those little tidbits with you guys so you can formulate your own recipe. And again, if you don't, if you haven't made soap, I wouldn't start with a shampoo bar. I definitely get your hands really into making soap and then delve into a shampoo bar. And if I would pick one to create, I would create a normal shampoo bar. Basically, that's one that's gonna fit everybody. Okay, I'm gonna set y'all up better than I did last time. For some reason, I set the camera up on my right side and my hand was blocking so much of what I was doing. So right now I'm making the uh, normal to curly mane and this just means anybody that has body or curls, everything that I've added in this is gonna keep those curls intact. It's not gonna weigh them down. And this bar is a 5% super fat. So I just added my melted uh, butters and uh, hard oils down into all of my um, liquid oils that I have in this recipe. So research all the things, you know, what avocado oil is great for, you know, in the hair. You'll learn all those things. It's, it's really great. And that's what I spent a lot of time doing, which is so worth it because you come up with a really great product. Okay, I'm gonna measure out the essential oils. Uh, make sure when you're doing essential oils or any type of fragrance, you wanna use a glass container. 0.5 essential oil ratio in my recipe. And again, you can get all of that um, when you form your recipe on soap calc. And using these skewers really help to make sure the essential oil or fragrance oil goes into the glass jar without running over. All right, and I'm just gonna add that, mix it a little bit and add it right to our oils and additives. Now one thing I will have to do is typically when I do several soaps, I just make a master batch of lye, of, of milk, goat milk and lye, but it's so important that if you have different oils in each recipe, your lye is gonna be different because each oil saponifies different, differently to the amount of lye. So it's like you need a certain amount of lye per soap recipe that you'll see, actually, let me show you my recipe real quick. Okay, so if you see here, um, the water, I, I do a uh, very drastic um, water reduction. And when I say anything about water reduction, it's basically whatever you're using in your soap, water, tea, you know, goat milk. And um, you'll see that this one is says, says that I need 4.2 um, ounces of lye for that amount of liquid. Now keep in mind, some of that's goat's milk and some of that is my um, nettle tea that I'm using. So an ounce of that is nettle tea. So my total water is 6.22 really when it comes down to it because I subtract my other liquids I'm putting in. So look here, this lye is 4.39 because of the different oils. Don't mind these notations here. That's when I double the recipe. This one is 4.4. So you see that you never want to substitute, say if you don't have enough olive oil for your recipe and say, well, I'll just throw in some avocado oil. Basically, they kind of do run 
along alike um, in the sense of lie needed, but you need to go back to soap calc and redo your numbers because you could end up with a lye heavy soap, which means a soap that would be dangerous to put on your skin. Or one, eh, if it doesn't have as much lye as it needs, it's gonna be super fatted, meaning there's more fat left over in your bar, like I explained earlier, which could be beneficial to the skin, but it could be too soft and never really saponify completely like it should. Okay, so my plan is I'm gonna do each one of these how I need it to completely prep with the additives are in them and the essential oils. Then I'm gonna get my favorite containers to use, which I am all about, you know, recycling. I love these yogurt containers. Now, this is perfect size for my shampoo bars to be able to do the lye, the nettle tea, and my goat milk. So all together, I'll be putting that frozen goat milk in with the nettle tea. And, and I have three of those. I'll just line them up, measure everything out, and um, start make, mixing them up. So by the time I'm ready, I can just start pouring soap. Mix in and pouring. I don't add the apple cider vinegar until my lye and oils are emulsified, meaning that they're blended together. Then I add my 3% apple cider vinegar. Okay, this is for our oily main shampoo bar. Okay, decided to bring y'all up a little higher so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so I need to get, put that aside because I'm using that right now, my white rice flour. I'm gonna be using a different type of clay, which is gonna be green clay. I love using my grandma's old jars too. It's like my little apothecary shop. <laughs> so again, I do about a teaspoon of each of my additives. And kale and clay. <laughs> Look at these. So this is normal to curly. It's dry. I mean, this is um, oily. The uh, dry mane, which that Moroccan clay will start blending in. It's almost like a light burgundy color that comes to be. So I'm gonna let that just sit a little bit more. Thought I was recording and I wasn't. <laughs> so um, I added a teaspoon of honey into each. It is so amazing because this really does help remove the um, buildup um, in your hair, it, the things that can clog the hair follicles, it conditions. Um, if you have any issues with, I mean, eczema, all those things, it can't dandruff. It can help um, with that because it has, um, you know, antibacterial properties to it. But one of my favorite things, aside from all those great things, is that it creates amazing bubbles. Anytime you add sugar, it creates amazing bubbles. Someone's come to see me. Hello. <laughs> um, so it's um, really great to add. Now, again, this is probably why my batter thickens up so fast, is because anytime you add sugar, it's gonna shoot that trace up really fast. Here we go, let's start, let's start measuring out our goat milk and nettle tea. Excited to say this goat milk that I froze was from one of my first fresheners. She had a single tin, a Molly Moo, who surprised me. You might've seen the short where I was totally surprised she had her baby, had her dates off. And she typically with a single baby, they like to eat off one side and not mess with the other side. And then it gets so engorged and then they can't get a hold of it. And then the mom doesn't want them eating on it. So I had to go in and um, milk that side. This is what I got. <laughs> I'm like blown away. She's a first freshener and um, I kept her to see how the milk line would go because my other, you know, her mom and her aunt are amazing at milking and so compact. They're so, you know, they're just, just great. I'm very pleased, very happy. All right, so let's measure that out. Really quick, I just wanna show you, I'm gonna be doing this week a salt bar, my pink salt Himalayan salt bar, and this is robust tea that I froze. So this is gonna be used in that recipe. Salt bar is a great bar to add to your product list. Okay, so now I'm gonna add about an ounce of nettle tea, and oh my gosh, that smells so good. Um, I could have froze this too, but I'm just adding an ounce to each container. All right, guys, it's time to put on glasses. I get mine off of Amazon in a big container, and um, it's really great. Okay, that's for this one, the curly to normal. Go 
over to the sink and this is where I have my container of goat milk cubes and nettle tea right sitting in here and I can add my lye and mix it up. still a little bit liquidy. Okay, so this is the new soap I made. This is called Bouquet. So I need to shrink wrap these and um, then make the labels. Well, I'm actually gonna make the labels first. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Canva. Okay, this is the, the website canva.com and I'm gonna show you some of the things I have utilized here, my basic soap label that I've created. These are two by two labels. And as soon as I get down here to the bottom, I will, I'm probably, what I'm gonna probably do is just, you can, if you create a label, um, that's gonna be a base label, like the design and everything, then you can just hit copy that little plus symbol. It says duplicate page and you can create another one. And then I can go in here and go, okay, it is a, it is a goat milk soap, and then I'll uh, then I'll adjust the um, ingredient list. It's gonna be yeah four and a half ounces. So I'll go in there and fix my ingredient list. Now, if I wanted to add a page, say I wanted to do something new, you can start fresh and new. You can go over here to it's just a little. I don't know if I put a glare on that, which is um, elements, and you can. Um, go find a design. See, they have soap bar. Um, you can even type in, um, say, soap and soap labels, and it'll pull up so many ideas. And of you know, if you have a circular one you want to do, or you know, what whatever. But you just want to make sure that your base um, that you're starting at is the size of the labels you have, and then you can go from there. So if I like say i don't it's obviously not a circular one so if i want they do a lot of circular ones if i want something square i start i can click on that one and hopefully that's focusing there we go um i can click on that one and then adapt it say that's not my brand color i can change that out right here you can change it out and pick a color. Now see, I have my, you can save, I don't have it titled yet, but you can save your brand colors and um, say if I wanna pick the background of purple, that's part of my brand color, um, I can do that and obviously change out the name, whatever I wanna say. And um, you are gonna need in any skincare, you're going to need to have the weight on it in ounces, um, you know, the net weight, and you're going to need to have your, your city, state, and zip code on your, that's just, um, I believe state to state, a requirement to have. And of course, what it is like soap bar, but there's so many options in Canva. You have many different elements too, that you can go and utilize. You can put your social media in over here. Um, it's just, it's great. I absolutely love it. And when I rebranded, it was so easy 
to be able to do that. So really quick, I'm gonna put my ingredient list in and I'm gonna show you how I print these out. So let's go to bouquet. I might adjust this a little bit. And so you have your ups and downs, you have your colors you can change to, whether you wanna bold it. Um, I will show you some effects over here that are helpful, like transparency. If you don't want something to be as bright, um, you can make sure it is centered say over here it's centered there's just it's great to get in and play with it i would recommend when you do your labels pick certain um, fonts you like and put those in your you know brand that's what you want to stay with so let me do this let me enter in these real quick okay so i have my ingredient list in there and i did adjust this these blocks that you create you can adjust you can adjust um and if you ever do something and you are like, oh no, I didn't mean to do that, right over here is a little tab that lets you undo. So, and I've gone back like undo, 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 undo several times. All right, so I need to save this. And so I'm gonna hit the share button in the corner right up here. So I hit share and I must come down to download because that's what I wanna do. I wanna have a downloaded file. I, um, I do want a transparent background because there's no picture in the background that I want to save. Now it's taking all 36 of my items, so I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna undo all those. I'm gonna do current page, which is 36. And I'm gonna hit done. Now I do want it in a PNG. That's great for printing. They suggest which one would be great. I'm gonna hit download. And now since I get my labels in online labels, I'm gonna go over here to online labels maestro this is the designer page now if you get your labels on on um online labels you will already have let me go back to the the home page you will have all the labels as soon as you purchase like literally as soon as you hit buy online you can go to the designer and they will have the, the blank labels ready for you to start editing that's what i think is so amazing because before you even get your labels you can have your labels created and I love that. So when I switched out to the new labels, I could go ahead and start creating right away. Now I wanna get that image I just had, I just made. So I'm gonna to go to images and it's not in my, um, you know, saved. Um, so I'm gonna go and there is my, it's gonna be in your downloads, whether you're PC, Mac, whatever, it's gonna be in your downloads because that's where you sent it. And you're gonna open that. And the first thing I do once I click it, so here's all my labels. I'm gonna go up here to position. This is what's helped me so much. And I'm gonna center it, okay? Over here, it's gonna give me a caution. It's gonna say, okay, you're, that's, it's kind of coming out of the lines, which it probably isn't, but I'm just gonna fix it. So I shrink it a little bit and go back to position again. And there it's gone. So I'm gonna go up to print. Everything looks good. I'm gonna go up to print labels, print now, download and print. I'm gonna wait until my download's done. It says open file, so now I can open it. I'm gonna go to print and printer, you better not act up. Um, see how it looks funky? So it's color, I want it in color. I'm gonna hit more settings, this is on mine, you can't see that. I'm gonna hit more settings over here and I'm gonna make sure it's actual size. See how that changed that? You might not have to do that to your printer, but for some reason I have to do that. And I have it on the best quality so here we go. I'm gonna hit print, see what we got. Cooperate with me, printer. Okay, there it is. A few little glitches. I had to put it back through because it only printed the top four, but um, at the first time around, so I had to go back in and print it, which happens. But let me show you what they look like on. And I I have a weatherproof uh, two by two label, but I love the way that looks. It doesn't cover the whole bar. I don't think I have one. Um, this was my old label, actually. This is my utter soap. I need to relabel. Um, but see how big that is? Um, and it would cover the whole bar, and I like how this looks. A little more um, like natural skincare, boutique kind of farm esque. <laughs> Okay guys, it is now Monday evening around seven. I didn't get anything done in the soap lab today. I had my grandson last night, so if I look tired, it's because I am. <laughs> but we're gonna cut these soaps and then 
uh, whip up some sugar scrubs. It's gonna be a, a small batch, but I wanna show you how I process that, how I come to a recipe with that. Um, all right, so let's cut these soaps. I'm gonna do a fast forward, and then I'll show you the tops and everything after. Okay guys, now this area over here is where I make candles and where I whip up my body butters. Um, something really important about making um, products at home, you wanna make sure, like I've said before, that you use rubbing alcohol to wash everything down. Everything is washed down off of my KitchenAid with rubbing alcohol, my bowl and my jars I'm gonna be using. So right now, these are this is a sugar scrub. This is a small, small batch. So I use, um, it's anhydrous uh, body butters and sugar scrubs, meaning I don't add any water. I need to move my candle stuff over there. <laughs> um, so it's just, this is actually just butters, which I did yesterday and then scooped out of the bowl that I melted it in here in my double boiler. And now I'm gonna start whipping it and adding my liquid oil. In this container here is my um, olive oil and my um, almond oil, which are great in sugar scrubs, and uh, also my watermelon uh, natural fragrance um, that I just love. And I'm gonna add a little bit of rose clay to that. Again, this is a small batch, so I'm, it's, it's not even a, it's really not even a teaspoon. So I'm gonna mix that up. We're gonna get this whipped. I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna add this mixture in. You're getting more product. Um, that's beneficial for your skin and you don't have to add a preservative. I do have vitamin E in here as well and I will be adding some citric acid which can also act as a natural preservative but it gives a little tiny bit of a fizz on your skin when you're scrubbing with this. take the whipping back down a little bit so I can add my liquid oils in and my fragrance, my coloring, my vitamin E. As you can see, it's starting to whip up nice. So, oh my gosh, this looks so, it actually looks like frosting. <laughs> So I'm gonna rub a little bit. I wanna be able to feel that scrub and look how it goes right into the skin. It's not oily at all. And then I'll just be able to rinse it right off, but it feels wonderful, perfect amount. Okay, can you see that? The water standing on my, on my skin from rinsing it off? That's what you want, awesome. Okay, so these are my containers. I get these off of Amazon as well and um, they're BPA free. Um, and this is my method of filling because this is so uh, creamy and it's just so amazing. Um, you're going to want to make sure uh, that your utensils are clean and dry, that um, you know, there's no water, no water in the containers. And I do weigh these and make sure, <laughs> look at that, and make sure they get proper weight that they're supposed to be. So that weighs out to be eight ounces of sugar scrub with minus the jar. And I'll get those. I wipe those down also with alcohol once I'm done. Make sure that they're free of any, um, you know, any oils or anything like that. And then let them dry a little bit and put my labels on. And I'm gonna close out here, guys, because I think this video it's going to be long enough as it is. Um, 
And if you have any questions about making your own product, again, um, I'll leave down some percentages. That's how I get that down in there. Perfect. All right, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you again. We'll do a um, visiting the baby goats in the next video. God bless, guys. Bye. <laughs>